Okay, this video is chapter 18 from this book, The Medical Reformation. Um, and what we're going to talk about in this chapter 18 is mitochondrial inhibitors. So, you know, I had been studying mechanisms like cytotoxicity for a long time, and it was pretty obvious to me there were issues where there were sometimes problems with mitochondria. It could be due to oxidative stress, excessive iron. It could be due to lipid peroxidation um, from eating omega-6 cooking oils. It could be due to um, excessive dietary fat, especially saturated fat. And I knew that some other things like in non-organic food, atrazine were uh, mitochondria inhibitors and glyphosate was a mitochondria inhibitor. But, you know, I wanted to understand it better. I went back through all my biochem books. I own like seven biochemistry books and none of them had anything on mitochondria inhibitors. I'm like, that's ridiculous, okay? That would be like one of the most important things that should be in the book. And the same thing too. I go, well, you must have a lot of information on excitotoxicity in your neurology books. And there's like a less than a page, you know, in the context of stroke and then in the context of epilepsy. And that's what I mean by it. these are the Ivy League books. They stink. They're a joke. And because people sometimes wonder, how could I be so confident saying that conventional medicine is a joke? I mean, because I really know it. Okay. <laughs> that's why I know it's a joke. Um, it's ridiculous. The most important thing that should be talked about, and that's why this is the Peter Rogers MD theory of neuro of neurodegeneration, is because all the the big name places and stuff they're a joke. Okay, so anyways, what happened? I I knew there had to be a whole bunch more stuff going on in the mitochondria, so I just started going through the literature. You know, inhibitors of mitochondria, and I just kept finding tons of them. I found over fifty of them pretty quick, and a lot of them are really common. Like, wait till you just look at these. So you know glyphosate on non-organic food, the stuff sprayed on soy. It's also sprayed on non-organic beans and oatmeal, so you got to watch out. That's why I recommend organic if you're going to eat those things. All right, what else? Atrazine, the stuff sprayed on non-organic corn, on the GMO corn. Okay, it's not only a mitochondrial toxin, it's also estrogenic chemical. And here's bisphenol A. And that was a big learning experience well, that a lot of these um, estrogenic chemicals, they're also neurotoxins. And I think it was Seralini, he's a big famous researcher of estrogenic chemicals. And he said, don't even call them estrogenic chemicals, call them estrogen and neurologic disrupting chemicals because 80% 80, 80 of them are toxic to the, um, the brain. And then not only that, a lot of the ones like soy, it's toxic to the thyroid. It's goitrogenic, you know, goiter, uh, goiter inducing. It's harmful to the thyroid. So um, yeah, so it's like a typical thing where you get all this pushback. There's all these idiots that haven't read anything, don't know the original papers, the basic science of it. Sit there and tell you soy is good for you. Yeah, right. And then all these low IQ chumps believe them. Okay, so anyways, what am I also saying? You look at, you know, F minus, okay, stuff in your tap water. That's a mitochondria inhibitor too. So these are common thing. There's many people that are exposed to like, you know, at least five of these, if not 10 of these. Look at statins inhibit uh, coenzyme Q in the inner mitochondrial membrane electron transport chain. Okay, so this really can add up. Um, and a lot of times that's why people are so sick. They're nickeled and dimed to death, you know, the death by a thousand cuts and they don't even know, they have no idea what's going on. They're totally oblivious. But when you look at it intelligently, you can say, well, gee, I could avoid taking a statin. Gee, I could avoid glyphosate. Gee, I could filter my water, avoid F minus. Gee, I could avoid omega-6 cooking oils, avoid the you know the toxic byproducts like hydroxynanol. Okay, um, I could test all the, the colored plates and cups in my house for lead, and make sure I don't eat off anything with lead in it. Okay, that's easy to do. Okay, um, I could avoid aluminum. I won't cook on aluminum. Okay, I will uh, not use deodorant. Okay, I won't take a uh, any iron fortified foods or any, you know, multivitamin or something with iron in it, okay? That's easy to do. Uh, what else? These Krebs cycle inhibitors. Well, I won't drink alcohol. That's also a mitochondria inhibitor of a sort. Um, arsenic. Well, I'll get the rice with the lowest arsenic and I won't have other things, you know, like uh, some of the apples-related products. That's another way to avoid it. I'll avoid anything that causes traumatic brain injury, okay? Um, these are all very doable things. I'll avoid processed food because they got all the antifungals in there, which are also mitochondria inhibitors. Anything that's going to be harmful to bacteria and fungi is probably going to be harmful to us. So you don't want to seek, you want to avoid it if you can. And here's another thing I think is funny. Metformin is a mitochondria inhibitor, complex one. And that's kind of a big joke to me because I know, you know, fellowship trained, board certified doctors is asking me, oh, should I take metformin to increase my longevity? I'm like, dude, 
open a book and read about it, okay? Why would you take a mitochondria inhibitor? The mitochondrial theory of aging basically says the more you inhibit or damage your mitochondria, the, you know, the more sicker you get, the less long you live. Um, you don't want to do that, okay? HG, mercury, which is common contaminant in high fructose corn syrup, you know, they used to advertise high fructose corn syrup as a preservative, and they wouldn't say it's because it's often contaminated by mercury. Okay, look at all these psych meds, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, a lot of them uh, are mitochondria inhibitors. And I told you in just in a previous lecture, a couple lectures ago, I wouldn't take those things. I think that they are, you know, they cause a slow lobotomy. All this, almost every single psych drug is bad. I'm not aware of a good one. Maybe there's some good one I don't know about. <laughs> I'm not aware of it. Psychiatry is poisons their patients like so many other fields in medicine. It's a disgrace. You know, I mean, I sort of like, I came from this noble sport of wrestling where everybody wanted to be good. Then I get into medicine and we're like, we poison all these stupid patients with all these toxic drugs and everybody pretends like it's just business as usual, but it's wrong. Okay, um, let's see. I just mentioned all these uh, SSRIs, and they can block it at several different spikes, sites. Some of them, like trazodone, block it at complex one. Sertraline's blocking it at ATP synthase. Okay, and there's a lot of other things that are toxic, like trichloroethylene. For example, I won't go to the dry cleaner, so sometimes I'll get teased. Oh, you know, your suit is wrinkled. You know what? It's good enough, okay? I'm not walking ever into a dry cleaning place. I would never use liquid paper, degreasers, any of these toxic chemicals. And I see a lot of people work with toxic chemicals. They don't even open their door. You know, let your place air out, okay? Uh, what are some of the other common ones in here? We talked about fat. All dietary fats will eventually, in excess amounts, lead to insulin resistance, but sap fat especially, short-term fast does so. Uh, titanium oxide, dioxide, nanoparticles, which are in a lot of things, can also be toxic to the mitochondria. Some of these sedation medications like propofol, okay? They can be toxic to mitochondria, isofluorine. That's one of the reasons, too. Like I said, I went for a colonoscopy many years ago. I wouldn't go for one anymore now that I understand it better. I don't think it's necessary for somebody like me whose risk is so low. But I refuse sedation. You know, my family mocked me. But, you know, I don't, I'm always afraid it's going to have a long-term persistent effect. Um, Ferrosamide is relatively common. Late water pill, diuretic. Um, and there's other ones in here that are common, too. Common antibiotics, tetracyclines fluoroquinolones, beta-lactams, aminoglycosides, okay, these anti-epilepsy drugs. So anyways, the point I wanted to make is, and I, there's a whole bunch of them I haven't even mentioned yet, there's lots of common things that are mitochondria inhibitor. And so just a good general rule of thumb is be a minimalist. If you're a minimalist, you avoid, you know, any unnecessary chemical exposures, and you only eat the healthiest simple food, you know, like the Spartan vegan diet, the medical monk diet, just simple stuff that your ancestors could have eaten, you know, thousands of years ago. Okay, uh, I think we covered all of those. Um, let's see. Oh, there's other things too, like MPTP, uh, designer drug that causes Parkinson's disease, inhibits mitochondria uh, complex one. So that's great. That's real reassuring. Things that inhibit the mitochondria, they're associated with causing diabetes, insulin resistance. They're associated with causing Parkinson's disease. That's pretty bad. Oh, and Haldol is another mitochondria inhibitor. That's an antipsychotic medicine like to treat a schizophrenic. Um, some of these SSRIs not only inhibit mitochondria, they can also cause Parkinson's disease. Isn't that great? Paraquat can do it as well. Okay, how to avoid excitotoxicity. We talked in just the most recent lecture about getting your adequate amounts of potassium and magnesium by eating plant foods, plus you get your antioxidants that way. You get your nitrates, precursors, and nitric oxide that way. It's all good. Um, avoiding excessive dietary sodium, avoiding stimulants, manage your stress, filter your water, get that, rid of that uh, F-, minus. get rid of that aluminum. In general, Anything that smells bad tends to be a circa inhibitor and or a mitochondria inhibitor, paints, glues, air pollution, car exhaust. Um, exercise actually improves mitochondrial function and circa function over time. Okay, let me see. How do I get back to move this thing along here? Um, anything that increases hemoglobin A1C associated with poor uh, blood glucose control and diabetes will tend to be a circa inhibitor. And that's bad because um, you can get into a vicious cycle. By vicious cycle, I mean a self-perpetuating cycle. 
Inhibitors of CERCA lead to increased insulin resistance. Increased insulin resistance causes increased diabetes, causes increased blood glucose, hyperglycemia, and the hyperglycemia then will be associated with advanced glycation end products, glycating hemoglobin and other proteins, and that's associated with decreased CERCA function. So it can cycle back on itself and progressively just get worse and worse. So you want to break the cycle by avoiding dietary fat and high dietary sodium, for example. Okay, so that was the point I just wanted to make was mitochondrial inhibitors are very common. There's tons of them. So by simplifying your life, you can avoid most of them. If you want, you can look back at that list. You can hit the print screen button. That's a good thing. You might want to slave that slide. That's a valuable thing. You can't find that information too easy. So mitochondrial inhibitors are a big deal. And anything that inhibits mitochondria means the neuron and other cells in your body are less able to make ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is energy. So if you diminish the neuron's energy, then that means when the calcium comes up in the cytoplasm, the, the neuron is defenseless. It can't defend itself. It doesn't have the ATP energy to pump that calcium out, so it's screwed. Its metabolic rate goes up and up. You start activating you know, damaging enzymes like calpain, uh, calcium-activated painful enzyme, and it starts destroying things like the knock exchanger. Cells goes into uh, apoptosis and dies. All right, so you need to have high energy to be able to fight off all these problems. And that, that's kind of like a little bit like my general philosophy to a health is be simple. Be simple and make yourself strong and resilient. And that way when problems come, you can handle them. You're strong. You're not weak. You know, it's the same thing. Like, you know, a young person falls over. They put their hands out. A little bit embarrassed. They're okay. You know, a weak old person, you know, with a walker, they fall over and they fracture a bone. And it could be... You know, they could die after that, okay? They're so fragile, you know, like at least like a third of them die after a hip fracture. Um, so anyways, that was just the point that mitochondrial inhibitors are a big deal. In a sense, and in a sense, what am I saying with all this? Mitochondrial inhibitors are excitotoxins because they have the same net effect of diminishing a person's ability to get calcium out of the cytoplasm. So the net effect of mitochondrial, mitochondrial inhibition is increased calcium in the cytoplasm, thus an excitotoxin effect. And what I'm basically saying is awareness of this just makes you realize here's over 50 more new excitotoxins for your brain. And it's pretty simple to avoid them, so protect your brain by doing that. Okay, I hope that was helpful.